My Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arik here, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a two week break, and as many of you know, it is because I got married. And for your viewing pleasure, there's a picture of Jessica and I for you. Um, and then we'll swap back to Callie the Cat, because that's a really good picture of Callie the Cat. Uh, now, before we dive in with Kazadum proper, um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who commented and wished me well for the wedding. There were so many of you, and that was really, really, really nice. Uh, I wasn't expecting that at all again. Uh, so thank you to each and every one of you that wished us well. I also have to just extend my thanks because I'm I'm bl blown away by this. And it's such a small thing, but it just it threw me totally. And that is to extend my thanks to ArenaNet, the creators of Guild Wars 2. Because when I came back from my sort of, um, from the wedding period, if you will, uh, I loaded up some Guild Wars just to have a little couple of hours of play before Jess and I moved on to the next event in the week filled with them. Um, and someone at ArenaNet obviously knew who I was, knew enough of my channel to know that I was getting married, or maybe someone had told them, I don't know, but they sent me a gift in-game and wished me all the best for my wedding. Um, and I just couldn't believe that because I don't talk about Guild Wars on this channel at all. Um, I mention it in absolute minor passing, just saying things like, oh, I'm just going to go and play some Guild Wars now. So the fact that they knew that I played Guild Wars, who I was, and that I was getting married, and then sent me a gift in-game, it was absolutely unbelievable. So thank you very much to whoever at ArenaNet <laughs> knew that I was getting married. It really, really, really made my week, if I'm honest. Um, after the wedding, of course, which was the best bit. Now, that's all the thank yous and the wedding stuff out of the way. We, I have, of course, now returned. There shouldn't be a break for some time. Probably not till next February when I go back to New Zealand. But for now, the channel will continue. So today we've got Kaza Dum for you. And we're about to kick that off for the, because it won, of course, the faction vote. I will also this week bring you a developer diary. I think it's about time. There isn't all that much to talk about, but still little news still makes for news. So, um, and I should up hold my end of that bargain and I think it's time to, to release a developer diary. So I shall do that this week as well. Otherwise we'll carry on with Battle for Middle-earth 2 with the rise of the Witch King. I believe we are really now zooming in on completing that series and I will carry on playing Warhammer 2 as well. I of course did get early access to everything related to Warhammer 2 much like all of your favourite Warhammer 2 channels. Uh, I could have well played as Torox and, and Oshiotl and I refused to call him Oxyotl. Um, and uh, but I didn't because it was came out basically a bang on the time that I was getting married and taking a bit of a break. So there we go. But for now, please sit back, relax, and I hope that you'll enjoy the return to Khazadum, the reclamation of Moria. Durin, eldest of the seven fathers, first awoken of the children of Aule, founded Khazadum, the dwarf mansions, the heart of our ancient realm. Since the first age, we had thrived and prospered in those halls, for there we found Mithril. There also was our greatest friendship with the elves in their kingdom of Holin, and our own part in forging the Great Rings. In this wonder lay our undoing, as we dug too deep and awoke Durin's bane. The spirit of shadow and flame, Valaraukar, a balrog of Morgoth. A thousand years have passed since Durin's bane drove us from our ancient home, and now our travel-worn expedition stands inside the Dimril Gate, the doors of Moria, and the words of friendship are revealed under the moonlight once more. Be aware, evil lurks in those depths, and Durin's bane still haunts the deepest reaches of Moria. It falls to you then, Lord, to return these great halls to their former glory. We are all stout veterans of many battles, but the possibility of reinforcements is slight, and we have few or no friends on our borders. We must count on our martial prowess, hard-earned against many a foe, and subtle diplomacy to secure our right to settle once more in those great halls of our forefathers. To the east, we might face the Sylvan Elves, who still blame our hunger for Mithril upon the waking of the Balrog, fiercest of their ancient foes. They will not forgive us that easily. Despite our enmity in these dark times, it would be wise to try to ease the tension and gain their favour, but the decision remains yours, Lord. To the west and the north there are great mines and halls of Khazadum, and the wonders of the Mithril Forge where once our forefathers' hammers rang as our songs were sung, and from our deep breweries there flowed rivers of our finest ales. By Sauron's will these are now in the filth-ridden claws of the goblins, our hated foe, 
cowards who will never have forgotten our axes and our battle wrath from the war of vengeance and the slaughter of Azog upon the stairs of Azanul Bazar. There will be no peace with those who slew our great king Thor, bearer of one of the last of the Seven Rings. Our axes cry out to drink the sweet nectar of hatred, to feast in the black poison of goblin blood. With war, pain, and wrathful war, mask our axe's thirst for revenge shall never be sated. To the scourge of the Misty Mountains is complete, the last shield is smitten, the last severed goblin head mounted upon an upthrust stake. It would be wise to reconquer these regions, as many of the forges and storerooms remain in working condition. That will be of great help reforging the armor and weapons for our mightiest warriors. Northward, along the great misty mountains, lie strongholds infested by wretched goblins. And one day, when we have regained our former strength, we shall move against those creatures and slay them, cleaning their festering corpses from under and atop these fine mountains. Until that day, my lord, we have to endure many battles while working to restore the halls of Durin and our greatest sires. Your loyal dwarves stand ready, awaiting your orders, ready to follow you on our quest to surpass our former glories, striding forth into the next chapter of our histories, and striking out boldly against those who would arrest our great march through the pages of the histories of Middle-earth. The time has come to reclaim our rightful home, so a trilateral meeting has been called in the town of Dale, with the elves of Thranduil's realm, the men of Dale and our kin. We will discuss a plan and then gather volunteers for our quest. We must move to the town of Dale, my lord, or we shall be late. Baruk Khazad, Khazad I Manu. Welcome, then, the campaign proper begins. And thank you all again to all of you for your well wishes over the past few weeks. It has been very lovely indeed. We've covered that already. Now, before I just talk briefly about that intro message, because it'll pop up again in a second. Of course, this is version five, Divide and Conquer, A Kingdom United is the name that was, uh, that's been chosen. And it's a smashing name at that. Uh, this, is, of course, is the welcome message. And once again, a simple reminder from me, Please read this message when you load up the game because it will answer a lot of questions that you may or may not have. And that's the thing, you may not even know what questions you need to ask and this will show you on your way. So please always make sure to read that when you start up a campaign. This, as I say, is version 5, which is unavailable to you at the time of recording. This was recorded on the 25th of July 2021. And at this time, version 5 is not available to the public. You still have version 4.6 and the details of that are in the description down below. Version 5 is hoped to come out sooner rather than later, but that is all I can tell you because I am along with the modders, do not know when it's going to come out. <laughs> so there we are. And then on to that message. Now, as many of you may have learned uh, or may have realized as I was reading through that message, um, it definitely needs to be reworked because the message definitely read as I was reading through it as though we are already at khazad which I thought was odd because khazad in Divide and Conquer has always been this expedition quest. So I, I don't know who wrote that and none of the current team in the mod wrote that. Whoever wrote that is long gone, absolutely long gone. And I just find it bizarre that they weren't told that you don't start at Khazad-dum, but at the beginning it definitely read like we were standing outside. It quite literally said, the expedition stands inside the Dimril Gate, the doors of Moria. No, we don't. I just thought that was odd. So uh, that could definitely do with being rewritten. Um, also, the tenses were all over the place. Sometimes it was past, sometimes it was present, sometimes it was future. I, I, I changed a few words throughout to try and make it a little more um, accurate, as it were, to the starting situation. Uh, but alas, I probably failed in a, in a great many ways. But um, it was still an enjoyable little read, wasn't it? And as with the Ardenaim campaign, I will give you little introductions once a week, little recaps of how the campaign is going, because they have been quite enjoyable to do, haven't they? So we will continue that tradition, um, but that, oh, you'll have to wait obviously two weeks for that, because I, there won't be one this week. So when you're playing as khazad you do not start, as you might have thought, in khazad No, 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 you start over here outside of the city of Dale, and you have to walk oh, to it. God. I think it tells you that somewhere. Does Barlin have a have a trait or something that tells you what you should be doing at each stage? I don't think so. So if you don't read those messages that pop up, the little scripting messages, then you'll have no idea what you're doing. Um, but we just need to head off to Dale, and I believe then we just end our turn here, and that, I think, is all we need to do. 
So I'm going to gamble that that's right and end the turn. Oh, that music playing has reminded me what I have not done. I didn't add the Tom Bombadil spawning sound from Battle of Middle Earth as the end turn sequence, and I promised in Premiere I would do it because he went to the trouble of getting the song out for me. I knew I'd forget that. <laughs> Absolutely knew I'd forget that. I need to keep um, a more visible note somewhere. I probably won't do it now because I don't like tinkering with um, the file structure whilst the game's ongoing. Ho-hum. Uh, oh, but anyway, how the bloody hell are you all? How have you all been keeping? How's the last two weeks fared for you? Here in the United Kingdom, we have had two weeks of insane heat. Um, absolutely outrageous. Hitting about 30, 31 degrees Celsius, um, which for England is outrageous, as I say. Something that lots of people then like to moan about is, oh, Pete, you moaning about it being hot. Try moving to Arizona. It's boiling here. And you just think, yes, that's fine. But everything about where you live in Arizona, if I can choose as an example, is designed to deal with the heat. Whereas England is famously a cold country and everything about our architecture, our lives, our facilities are all built to retain heat. All of our houses are designed to keep the heat in. So when it's ridiculously hot outside, they turn into small saunas. Um, and it's in, it's unbearable in the heat, so we've all got fans because air conditioning is a waste of money. For two weeks a year, it's not worth getting air conditioning. But anyway, enough of that. Let's read this. Many paths and errands make. Look at the bespoke UI as well. I've forgotten how much attention to detail the original DAC team gave the Kazadum campaign. We exposed our intentions to the assembly and unfortunately Thranduil and the men of Dale refused to provide any decisive support to our cause. Almost 40 years have passed since our Lord Barlin and his company reclaimed Erebor, bringing peace to Northern Ravanian. yet our so-called allies believe our quest to be folly. Nevertheless, we have had better results with our kin. Optimistic dwarves from Erebor and the Iron Hills have volunteered for our journey. Without delay, we must decide upon which course to take to Moria. There are two proposed routes to discuss, my lord. Please listen carefully. We can use the longer route by first passing along the foothills of the Ered Mithrin and then turning south through the Anduin Vale. It'll be safer, but it will take more time, and we have a higher chance of alerting the misty mountains of our mission. The second option is through the forests of Mirkwood, and Balin knows from experience the dangers within. As of late, the darkness of Dol Guldor pervades the woods. Many attacks should we expect on this route. An interesting phrase. Yoda's apparently reading this. Many attacks we should expect. But it will be swifter, and the orcs which infest our home will not see us coming. Lastly, keep in mind that while our starting gold is well funded by the leftover shares of Balin's dwarves, the longer the quest, the less gold we shall have to rebuild Moria quickly. Should we use a longer route and safer northern route? Shall we use the longer and safer northern route? This full path will delay our arrival tomorrow, but we'll be safer, accept and select the check mark to take this, or go through the forest, which is quicker but more dangerous. I've played this campaign once before on the channel, but I believe it was about five years ago, and I think we went through the forest, so I, this time I'm going to go along the mountain. Um, I could be completely wrong there. It, in my brain, the, the, the last time we played Khazadum is almost like a haze, a, a, a forgotten memory shrouded in a mist. But I know that I've played Kazadum on the channel before, but it was so, so long ago. Oh, and I I don't call this shameless at all, but a plug, of course. If you enjoy me playing as the dwarves in Middle Earth, then please do tune in and watch along to the Warhammer 2 Dwarven campaign. Uh, because it's got the dwarves in it. It is official. We shall traverse the foothills of the Ered Mithrin and then travel through the Anduin Vale on to Moria. Our dwarves will be safer there, but there will still be perils to face along the way. We must respect the following rules while on the quest of Moria or our campaign may be cut short. And by cut short, it means you'll just fail and you'll have to start again. So you can't capture anything other than Moria. You cannot declare war on anyone. You have to capture Moria within seven years, which is 28 turns. After that, our company will be recalled to terrible, or rather, you'll fail. Uh, and follow the directions given. The route is planned ahead, and if we do not follow it, we'll face the wrath of the king. Now, that last one is written for law flavor. Because actually, if you deviate... Yeah, uh, sorry, in fact, you can't deviate. There is no way to deviate. Um, the regions that you can set foot in are predetermined, and you'll note you are restricted from leaving the path. So that last one doesn't, is just really to tell you that you can't actually go anywhere other than your target. Oh, I haven't locked the cursor. Oh, hang on. Sorry. There we go. Don't want the screens all flying around. Um, so yes, please let me know how you've been, how you've fared if you're here in the UK with the heat wave. Jessica and I, uh, we've done a ride through the heat wave, actually. I, I mean, uh, the day that we got married was very, very hot. But because we got married in a woodland, as you saw from the picture earlier in this video... 
Um, it was lovely. There was a breeze. It was shady. It, I didn't get overheated at any stage. It was an absolutely smashing day, to be honest. Um, fantastic day. Oh, High Lord Babalin has got a wife. He's taken a wife immediately. Oh, hello. Oh, bugger. I should have... Come on, Gally. You should anticipate these things. Foolish. And we're the richest faction in Middle Earth, apparently. But we are losing 2,000 gold a turn. Now, unfortunately, the Khazadum start is very much just a long, slow slog. We fight a couple of battles as we walk through, but it is my hope to try and get the expedition part of the campaign over and done with in this first episode. So, ideally, by the end of this episode, we will have captured Moria so that they we can then actually start the campaign proper. And I shouldn't have thought that would be too difficult. Do we have a spy or something that we could send? Don't, do we? With barely any movement speed at all. It's absolutely ridiculous. Of course, to talk about the actual law for a second, because that's why many of you came here in the first place, Balin's expedition famously failed, as you all know, but it didn't fail immediately. They had a great deal of success initially, um, and they were able to capture a great deal of Moria, actually, and I believe, if memory serves, that they... Um, there were five years from the point that they got to Khazad-dum to the point that they died. I believe they had five years of rebuilding and growth before they were overrun by goblins. I don't believe, if memory serves again, and apologies, this is all just off the top of my head, I don't believe that the Balrog was the cause of their demise, but rather they were woefully outnumbered by the hordes of goblins that have taken up residence in Moria, and uh, they were just killed in the normal way. But they had some success at the beginning. Uh, but, and of course, in the film, Gimli makes out like he um, is expecting Balin to be there. But in the books, Gimli is far more sceptical and is kind of already come to terms with the fact that it's likely the expedition has long since failed. And he is simply going to try and find just some final proof that, of what all the dwarves already think. But anyway, Snagger Raiders. My lord, a company of miners has stumbled across a, a camp. They say a large Snagger force has come down from the mountains. A dig site was raided. They fled east where they met up with other miners who had been attacked and many did not survive. They asked for our help to defeat the Snagger force, to avenge their lost ones and to save other miners in the nearby foothills. The survivors will join our company if we agree to wipe out the Snagger Raiders. Do we help them? Yes, of course we do. Uh, I should also say uh, our victory conditions are to defeat Dunland, Moria and Gundabad and capture the capital regions of all three. But the capital region of Dunland has since changed to Byrig, but the requirement for our victory has made, has been kept at Dunyard because yours truly didn't amend it um, when, when I should have done. <laughs> Back when I was part of the team. Oh, why is this laggy as all hell? What on earth is going on there? Uh, apologies, everyone, but the, the computer is, is not enjoying displaying this. Not one bit. I don't know what's going on there. I think this is the first time I've played on the... No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Anyway, um, right, we're attacking and we have no idea what we're up against. And I think we're attacking them. Oh, I am sorry about that. That is just horrible, isn't it? What on earth is going on? Right, we've got three very good units. Let's put these at the back and just have a little look at them. So we've got the Erebor Infantry. Um, they are mainline dedicated Dwarven infantry, fairly good stats, 9 attack, 5 charge, 14 defense, shield wall availability, um, excellent stamina, and like all Dwarves their morale is very high. And we've also got Dragon Slayers. Dragon Slayers are one of the Dwarves' best units. Frightened enemies, effective against armor, insane attack of 12, and a defense of 31. They are monsters of war, and very powerful indeed. Um, Balin's Guard is also, of course, very good, and they have long since been changed in the way that they look. You might recall an older model that had a very sort of bright white armour. Um, they looked a little bit like they were glowing. Well, they were long since been revamped, and they look like this now. They might upgrade to the old look, actually. Oh, no, of course, they then upgrade to look like that in the image. Um, so the older, the really old glowingy one has long, long gone. But anyway, Balin's Guard, 10 attack, 36 defence, so slightly more... Defensive than the Dragon Slayers, but not as aggressive. Okay. Oh dear, that is annoying me to no end. I'm assuming it's coming across in the recording as well, but on my screen it's not smoothing smoothly at all, and I have no idea what's the cause. Otherwise, we've got some Khazad volunteers who are the early tier 
uh, Dwarven mainstream, or Khazadum mainstream, sorry, because of course below them are the m laborers who were used to be called miners and now called laborers, who um, all three Dwarven factions get. The Khazad volunteers are our first dedicated warrior. Seven attack, 14 defense, it's not bad at all. And we have got two units of Dwarven travelers, Khazadum's primary ranged force in the early stages of the game. Uh, after this battle, I'm going to pause and go and fiddle around with my settings, but you're going to have to endure this battle at a sort of odd, blocky, jittery, annoying state. Right, what we want to try and do, if possible, is keep our elites alive. So the main line is going to be made up of the labourers and the um, Khazad volunteers. How long do we have to eat? Archers, and then we got our four elites who can come at the back. Alright, what are we up against? Snagger archers, snagger archers, skirmishes, skirmishes. Oh, bugger. It's hordes of skirmishes. Oh, no. Skirmishes are so annoying. Right, offer up a um, sacrifice to each side. Move the lines up. Archers, if you can shoot, do shoot. Pull our elites out, don't take losses. Right, the plan is hopefully that the skirmishers will just waste everything on these labourers. Those archers are going to be a pain. We're never going to stop them. Oh dear, that's an annoying thing. That's something I would change as well, to be honest, if I was still modding. I think I would get rid of snagger archers in this army because that's just a nuisance to deal with for a Khazad Dum campaign. Oh no, the skirmishers have just... Uh... Oh, it smooths out a bit when we go to time six, that's interesting. Uh, those other, those labourers will be chasing them down for days. Oh no, we've met the mountain guard, who are almost certainly going to wipe them out. So the elites are going to have to get involved. Right, Dwarves outclass Snagger, as you might expect, to an insane degree. Oh, and the unit I haven't actually shown you are the Labourers. Now, the Labourers' only thing in their defence, other than actually they have pretty good stats for your very first tier unit, um, attack of five and a defence of nine is not to be scoffed at when you're up against things like Snagger with one defence and three attack. And these massively outclass them. And they are effective against armour, so their attack is actually much better than uh, listed on the card because of that benefit. But we are going to lose at least two labour groups. Probably going to lose a little bit more than we really need to. Um, and chasing down those archers is going to be a pain in the neck. The if we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. But I think what we should do is send Baal in to chase the archers. Because if they stop and shoot him, then, then brilliant. To be honest. Get the dragon slayers in. This side will win. Oh yeah, they already have done. Did the skirmishers run away? Oh, they did, and then they're coming back. Only half the enemy force remains. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like right, this, over this we side. will smash the enemy. Oh, the mountain guard have been dealt with. It's very soundly, blimey. Alright, just archer off then. They've got 150, but we've got 200. The battle is very much in our favour. Come on. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. Yeah, I definitely would remove those archers. Good tidings. The enemy general lies dead. We have sent the car to hell. Oh, and look, the snagger archers don't want to shoot Barlin. So they now just can't get past him. Give him an on hubbub and let's keep going. How are we doing against those ones? They're about to die. And that's it. Oh, thank goodness for that. Just 471. That's a lot more than we wanted to lose. 173 Dwarven Labourers. Now, do remember, of course, that the battle for Khazadum is a slog and a half. And a, it's, a, it's a challenging section of the battle. 
of the campaign, I should say. Um, and it's not necessarily defended with brilliant troops and um, that you've really got to play tactically. It's just Eastern Khazadum is such a defender's haven of a battle map that even the AI can use it to their advantage. Yeah, so, and we have to face that. Glory to the king. Glory to the king. We've won. Where are Where to? my labor reinforcements? Oh, does it let us go through the forest? Apparently so. Well, on we go. Right, I'll just briefly pause it there. I'm going to give it a save. Let's call it KD1. Uh, and I'm just going to fit around with the battle map and I shall be back. Bear with me a moment. And we're back. Onward, Balin. Next turn. Now, I think the reason that my... In doing the research that I've then just done, I think the biggest reason that battle map might have been laggy is just because of that map. Not because of the map specifically, but every now and then there are certain battles in when I've been playing DAC over the, these past seven years now. Um, every now and then there are battles that are just randomly laggy and the game doesn't really ever give you a reason as to why they're laggy. Um, they just are. And uh, I wonder if that's unfortunately a culprit of that. And it's just one of those battle maps really and there's nothing really that we can do. Uh, interestingly though, we didn't get any reinforcements for fighting that battle, so we've deliberately <laughs> hampered our chances of victory. Straight off the bat, how annoying is that? Very disappointing indeed. But at least we get to listen to the Britain's music again. I haven't thrown out the idea of playing some Age of Empires on the channel, but I do. I at the moment we're very much in a transitionary period, as I just wait and see how life is going to take me, um, and what kind of time I'll have free to do YouTube videos, and then we can decide from there. Really, I had discussed the the potential of maybe dropping down to only four videos a week instead of five, um, and that's total videos. So at the moment there are four normal videos, aren't there, and then one live stream. So it's five overall videos a week. And I was toying with the idea of dropping to four. But at the moment, I don't actually feel I need to do that just yet. But um, we're just in a transitionary period. We're going to get the lay of the land. Something else that I really would actually like to do that you've all spoken of many times is actually start finally reaching out to the other um, Divide and Conquer YouTubers and playing some multiplayer battles just so that we can get something a little bit different. The number of times I've seen people request that I fight against Izzy, for example, it has been very, very high. And Izzy and I did indeed discuss it at one point. And in essence, I basically chickened out because I'm very well aware that he's going to beat me. But then in discussion with a friend of mine, it was suggested that we could tinker with the format a little. So rather than just we each have the same army and you all watch Izzy absolutely wipe the floor with me, I could have some sort of challenge army. And knowing that Izzy is the better player, we could try and um, I could have a, a horde of Snagger, for example, and he could have a couple of elites. And it's a challenge of how can he beat it. Uh, I think something's supposed to happen to me when I get to that red circle. But all it requires is that you go to a region... Is there another red circle lower down? No, there's not. And that red circle has passed. I'm going to go and stand in that and end the turn. Oh, yes, I will take mercenaries. And see if something triggers. I have not worked on the Khazad Dum script. Even when I was the head of Divide and Conquer and when I did mod frequently, I never worked on the Khazad Dum script. Um, I might have tinkered with the odd like unit composition or things like that, but I have not done any major work on it. And I must confess that I, it's been years since anyone's really played it and gone through it. And so I, the, I, I'm almost coming at this like someone who's never even played it. I understand roughly what's going to happen, and I, this is what I was expecting to happen. I, I thought there was a siege at Bjorn's Halls in this side, so um, but it seems that for your benefit, watching along, if you're going to play Khazadum, stand in the circles. Bjorning's under siege. My lord, our scouts have noticed something to the east. It appears the mountain orcs are assaulting Bjorn's Halls. The Bjornings have helped dwarves in the past, and we should return the favour to ensure the Andrew Vale remains safe. Will we assist the Bjornings with the siege? Well, last time we assisted, we didn't I'm get anything. Um, and they've got they've got a huge garrison though. So actually, this time, yes, we will. My lord. Do I have to go and attack then? Because if I attack them, Marching oh, there we go. Yeah, you do have to attack. And then it locks you into battle. Stand. There's Olmo, the Lord of Waters. Olmo is arguably the only Valar 
who is actually interested in the saving of Middle Earth. He actively takes a part in trying to help the peoples of Middle Earth. Ah, there we go. That's much better. Now, the only thing I did do is turn off V-Sync. And the reason I turned off V-Sync is because this new monitor I'm using, which I'm sure I've recorded on before, uh, that's why I'm a little thrown. But I'm using a new monitor. Um, but I got it weeks and weeks ago. Um, and I'm sure I've recorded before. I really am. Uh, but anyway, the new monitor has G-Sync in uh, as standard. And so I did wonder if maybe the V-Sync in the game, because it's a very old game and G-Sync's very new, maybe that was fiddling around, that was playing around with it somewhere. So I turned off V-Sync for now. Um, but it probably has had it will probably have absolutely no effect and really the problem was just that random battle map was laggy that's what i'm going to settle on i think in terms of my in my thought now we did attack them but we are supported by the entire garrison of the city um, and we've got some expendable mercenaries now the Dogledore scouts archers or are they javelins javelin nice the awnings get stuck in sons now what we want to do is just kind of wait, and if we wait long enough, the awnings will deal with this victory for us. The men of the Vale are stout, they are hardy, and they are more than capable of dealing with this trash Gundabad army. But well, we can send in our Bjornings to help. Can't hurt, can it? Keep up now. Right, volunteers go left, elites. Oh, the way round. Oh, I'm turning into Jess. Volunteers go right. Elites go left. Merkwood Hunters. Their archers indeed. More snagger based archer units. Joining Axemen to soak up that javelin fire and then get some kills in for me please. Go on sons, you can do it. Look at those two handed axes. They're almost as tall as the orcs. Oh, the flag got in the way. Oh, sorry everyone. Axe's wheel overhead as well. Pull the cab out. Let's get some charging going. All of you sprint into your position so that the archers can start doing something. We have cavalry now. Your archers are no longer a threat. Now, I did try and hire mercenaries when we were standing in Dale, but I think they don't... I don't, maybe they're just not in the pool on turn one. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but there were no mercenaries available. Because getting Dale Cavalry on turn one is, an, is a very useful um, tactic for a Khazadim campaign. Now, enemy goblins are charging up the hill at us. Oh, we can come and kill these goblins. Let's speed this up. We're not really doing anything. I should get them to rout, and, I, and it does indeed. Our men are winning the battle. And then so hit those goblins. Like this, we will I should get them the to rout, enemy. and it does indeed. Get the cavalry out. How are we doing? 6% plus 40. Ah, we're doing much better this time. Merkle Bodyguard it is, is in amongst that mechs there. Our axemen are fleeing. They've paid the price. Oh, there's Merkwood Hunters over there. Right, cavalry. Take them out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The cavalry will deal with those hunters, don't Our worry about that. Are winning the battle. Only half the enemy force remains. Only half the enemy force remains. Ah, oh, they're routing. The dwarven circle closes in about our foe. Nothing stands taller than the might of the dwarves. The slow wall of death creeps in upon our foe. Now, of course, if you are a fan of the Hobbit movie designs, then Kazadum is arguably not the nation you should play, because Kazadum has their own bespoke designs that are not influenced by the film. There might be the odd thing here or there, like you might see the odd shield and think, oh, that looks like a shield from the film. We have captured but the on the whole, general. they have their own visuals. Teach the cowardly dog. The enemy army be in awe of the victory we have won Lord here Bjorn, today. we've saved your soul. We killed 1,889 and we only lost 248. Fantastic. 240 Dwarven Travellers. Oh, well done. 229 Dwarven Travellers. And we only barely lost any friendly fire that time. 
I saw a few arrows whistling in amongst our lines. I did worry that perhaps we were killing some of our own. Now, something as well that I've been toying with doing on the channel and something that I have spoken of many times is doing something related to the actual films. Um, and the most recent suggestion is to do a overview, essentially, of each Hobbit movie and talk about the most egregious law breaks. Which has been requested a number of times. March no further today. But we'll see, as I say. We're in transition, we're in transition. <laughs> but no, the first thing I'd really like, the, in the first initiative I really would like to do is start getting some multiplayer battles against other um, YouTubers going. Collaborations, if you will. Um, because I think that would actually be quite fun. And also, I bang on about being rubbish, but maybe I'm not as rubbish as I think. All these years of practice, something must have happened. The Karok and Bjorn's halls remain in the hands of the Bjornings thanks to our valiant efforts in defeating the mountain orcs. Bjorn himself rode to meet us and thanked us for our efforts. In appreciation of our actions, a group of Bjorning mercenaries volunteered to join our company. Oh. Aye, my king. Gee, thanks. Uh, Admiral Yord, you're standing completely in the way there, son. Aye, if you could just toddle off. All right, we are almost before the walls of Moria. I don't think there are any other battles to go, so it's just a, a walk through. And the Anduin are blocking passage over the river. But in order to not have to wait another unnecessary turn, I might just jump us over the river, because the Bjornings would let us pass. Oh, and indeed they are letting us pass. Is the red circle still over here? March. Yeah, I'm going to end my turn in the circles each time. Uh, just for safety, really. <laughs> safety and security. <laughs> We're passing through the Hobbit dwelling of Fenelm. Hobbits, of course, once lived in the Gladden Fields, which is the area we are now in. Our lazy scouts have let spies of the Mountain Norse escape into their depths. By now, the Orcs and their chieftains surely know of our intentions. They may try to stop us, or they may even try to reinforce Moria. We must be prepared for the worst and emerge victorious. Uh, Hobbits, yes. Hobbits came from the east in an undisclosed and unknown location. Unlike humans uh, who awoke at Hildorian and elves who awoke at Cuivirnan, hobbits are some sort of distant relative and offshoot of humans who have a, a hazy and shrouded founding. It is not known how they came to be if one of the Velas specifically sponsored their creation as Yavanna did with the Ents and as Aule did with the Dwarves. Um, they just kind of existed at a certain point uh, and their first the first time they truly come into the histories is they're moving into the gladden fields where they settle and it is there of course where Smeagol finds the ring and many of his people still reside Smeagol is a stoor hobbit and stores are the kind of outsiders of the hobbits if you will because they are not afeard of water and they readily make boats and readily sail rivers whereas most hobbits do not take to the water with any free will. <laughs> um, they're not water goers, really. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions to prove the rule, and some the, the brandy bucks, um, of course, do venture over and across the Brandywine River. But they, you wouldn't call them properly water going. They don't have a love for it. Whereas the stores, they fish, they, they, they do all sorts of things. Uh, and in time, the hobbits then eventually also migrated over the mountains where they then moved to Dunland next and then eventually on to the Shire. We've been attacked. I didn't think there'd be another battle, but there, we've been attacked. But as we are the Defendor, we can sit on a hill and watch as they run at us and I will do that deploy the age old tactic of standing on a hill and laughing at your enemy <laughs> assemble the lines assemble the lines <laughs> sorry start the battle what comes oh it's a wag horde smashing because of course it is alright give it a pause so, defensive line around the archers. Nothing gets through. If the Wargs want to hit us on the right-hand side, they are more than welcome to it, because that right-hand side is where our best anti-cavalry units are. 
Axemen, you're not going to be much use here. You don't get any defensive benefit. But the warriors, or volunteers, sorry, they will be alright. The enemy will try and flank us. They will try and flank us hard. Hey, you attack me. Come at me. Riders. What have we got here? Azog's Defilers. Oh no, Azog's Defilers are their elite ones. Damn. Uh, yes, there they are. Looking very nice. Little armoured warg. I think that warg model is from Reforged. Uh, there's much in the mod that's from Reforged. It's just a nice little change up of the model, isn't it? And particularly that it's armoured. Maybe Reforged took it from someone else. I, I don't know. It was added ages ago now. Alright, Wag Scouts are crossbows, plug out. They're moving in. We've got Wag Riders, who are just a worse form of Azog Defiders, and are just shock cavalry. Oh, but then our archers can deal with the Wag Scouts. Wag Scouts, or, or Wags in general, are very easy targets of arrow fire because they have such massive hitboxes. Alright, as soon as the enemy is hit, move around and close in. You go and hit those Azog Defilers. You come and just block this side if the Defilers decide to come for us. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Ah, uh, they're doing. They're trying to run in and out. They're flexing. Oh, those ones are routing. Oh, our cavalry's dying though. Someone get down the hill and help them. Only half the enemy force remains. No. No. Oh, I'm not paying attention. And we just lost half our archers in a single bloody charge. Keep killing the scouts, please. Oh, I've not even moved the camera. How have you still got javelins left? Azox defilers are excellent on the charge. Not so good if you keep them in prolonged melee, even with their high armor stats. Let's see their stats. I'll show you their stats. 14 attack, 12 defense, and a 19 defense. Or 4, 12 charge, sorry, and a 19 defense. Good morale, or very good. Petrus response. They are slightly slower than horses. Always have been. These guys, oh, they were set on skirmish, and then they've stopped. There we are, we caught them. That should be the end the of the defilers. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. Leaving only those wild scouts. There I was singing the praises of how easy it is to kill wargs, and the archers have actually not killed very many at all. Oh, and the defiers. 320. Oh, gods above, Gallif. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The battle for Khazadum is going to be a challenge. Once you take Khazadum, though, the campaign takes on a much easier bend because Moria can't really get to you without attacking between the two Khazadum settlements. And so once you've taken the western one as well as the eastern one, Moria, in many ways, is removed as a major threat. Um, Gundabad, who of course we are at war with, are way too far away to actually do anything. Um, what on earth happened there? Why is he... Uh... Alright, let's merge what we've got. What little we've got, I should say. Oh. Oh, smashing. Well, welcome to the army. <laughs> As was I here, would you believe it? The mercenary pool really has been expanded. Nice. I'm a big fan of that. I like mercenary pool. I think mercenaries are a very good thing, and I'm pleased that um, not only, obviously, that they were fixed um, some time ago now, but also that they seem to have been expanded. Or that may just be a consequence of them being fixed. Maybe Azra Zaire were, or Corsair, that they've been renamed to Corsair now. They uh, Maybe they were always available in this region. Uh, and uh, just because of the broken mercenary pool. Ah, uh, they have indeed been renamed to Corsair now. Hailing from the distant southern region of Umbar, these Corsairs are well aware of the advantage of the bow and are a constant plight, blight on both Gondor's and Eriador's shores. Uh, in most shipboard conflicts, the vessel with the greatest complement of archers is often the one that sails away victorious. These soldiers therefore use bows, yada yada. We're almost there, everyone. Oh, Dol Amroth and Kand are now at war. And... 
made it just in time. We're about to lose all our money. Right, at least we've got some fodder to send up the horrible slope of Khazardum. We must pass the Miromare, the great pool outside of Moria, wherein which Durin first saw the stars appear above his head and how it were the, the sighting. The event that just made him decide to declare this his home. The same crown was seen above Balin's head some time later after he reclaimed Moria. And it is, of course, at the Miramir where he then was killed in an ambush. You have reached Moria, one of the first settlements of the dwarves founded by Durin, the first king of the Longbeards in the First Age. Moria, also known as Khazadum or Dwarodwelf, Dwaro Delf, lies beneath the three mountains named Baranzinbar, Zaragzigil, and Bundushathar, Bundushathur. Moria is not only important for its spiritual value or the size of the settlement, but mostly because the precious metal Mithril can be mined here. During the First and Second Age, Moria became a great settlement which was allied with both elves and men. During this period, the doors of Moria were created by the dwarf Navi and the elf Celebrimbor. The dwarves expanded Moria into a seven-level settlement with a great hall. Many rooms, like the Chamber of Marzabal, Tunnels, Durin's Bridge, and the Endless Stair, which ascended from the lowest dungeon to the highest peak, where it terminated within Durin's Tower on top of the Zaraxagil. Moria even survived the attacks of Sauron, but finally the settlement was lost to a demon which could not be harmed by steel nor stone. In the deepness of Khazadum, a Balrog of Morgoth awoke because of the mithril mining, and he killed King Durin the Sixth and his son, Nain. The dwarves had no choice but to abandon Moria and relocate it to Erebor, after a very long series of events. Many centuries later, in 27 2790, driven from Erebor by the dragon Smaug, Thor, heir of Durin, attempted to re-enter his ancestral home despite warnings not to. He was slain by the orc chieftain Azog, a murder that precipitated the war of the dwarves and orcs, culminating in a bloody battle outside Moria's eastern gates nine years later. The dwarves were victorious, but at a bitter cost, and they did not have the strength to face the Balrog. So once more, Moria was lost, and the dwarves abandoned their campaign. Well, here we are. Snagger stands within. Muznak, conqueror of Moria, guarding it. They've got some overseers, but that is a pitiful army, and we should definitely pounce. The doors of Moria read thusly. Enun Durin Aran Moria. Pedo Melon Amino. And then it says underneath that, I, Navi, made these doors and Celebrimbor of Eregion drew these signs. And in Sindarin, I believe that is Im Narvi Heinekant I Celebrimbor o Eregion Taithant I Thui Hin. Oh, I'm sure I got that last part wrong. Oh, I'm sure I got that last part wrong. Someone will correct me in the comments. Enun Durin means Doors of Durin and Aran Moria means Lord of Moria. Pedo Melon Amino means Speak Friend and Enter. We don't need to Speak Friend and Enter because we've bought, we have brought a bloody big battering ram. So there'll be no speaking. Oh no, let me save it. No! Gallo, you've made a terrible critical error and the time for our attack has come. <laughs> Well, bugger. <laughs> Victory or death? Welcome to the walls of Moria. Now, the doors of Durin, of course, um, are not actually on this side, so the battering ram isn't even needed. But as you can see, this battle map is horrific. And a la large chunk of it is wasted space. Um, but coming back through the hall, you have the square here in this horrible little room. And to get to that horrible little room, you've got to climb this horrible ramp. <laughs> now, I'm saying horrible. I'm not der deriding the choices of the person that created this battle map. Nay, far from it. This battle map is fantastic and is as defensive as you would like it to be. It's just a bloody pain in the neck being the one trying to assault the thing. And that, unfortunately, is our charge today. But we can set up, as you can see, all the way up to here. You don't actually need to break anything down. So... Corsairs of Umbar. You are... Oh, can I really not move you that? There you go. You're going in first. You are what I like to call arrow fodder. Everyone else, um, I will move you in. But just come and stand as close as you can for now. I will lead the dwarves into battle. 
Can you can you not stand here? What's going on? Here we go. Right now, lives do not matter. Lives, lives are forfeits, if you will. Oh no, and Bjornings, you're going to be sacrificial as well. Welcome, woodsman. Send the cavalry. We're ready. Our enemy is right at the top. Go, 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 go. Right, and then dwarves get to the bottom of the slope. This battle map really is just a slog. It is a, going to be a probably 10 to 15 minute long slog as we fight through this insanely cramped battle map. But bear with it, um, because it's the timer is on to give the AI at least the same disadvantage that I... Um, to give me the same disadvantage that I give the AI, sorry. Right, everyone's sprinting, everyone's moving. We've got Corsair. I just can't believe you get Corsairs in um, north of Lothloria. That seems such a bizarre location for me. Right, we're across the main bridge. The bridge of Khazadun. It seems like someone's taken a pass over this battle map and improved it. They've gotten rid of the huge hole in the floor and made it this black uh, textualist space, which is way better. Uh, that's something that RK was going around doing, so I wonder if this is one of RK's... Um, this is RK's doing. If you Come on, get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there. Up they go, up they go, up they go, up they go. Dwarves streaming in behind. The flag of Khazadum crossing the bridge. It's a s lovely sight to see. Doom, 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 doom. No, oh, come on. I know you don't have much mass, but push through, push through. Get right up Our into the door. Winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Oh, of course our archers have gone too far ahead. Not that archers are really very useful in this settlement, but uh All right, dwarves that can there is a task for you once you're all in position, and it's shield walling. We need to get as many forces up the top of that ramp as we can, uh, otherwise this is all going to be for naught. So someone's got to push the enemy back, and then we can blob in behind them. And that someone is a mix of the Erebor infantry and the Dragon Slayers. I'll stand by your side. Up we go, chaps. If anyone can fire arrows, please feel free. Yeah, rain fire down on whatever you can. Ah, oh, we're losing the hilltop. At least they haven't got any trolls or anything. This is actually a very minor garrison. We should be able to break this quite easily, I think. Alright, we're in position. We are in position. Adopt the position. Shields together, dwarves! And then all three of you, the task is simple. Push through the sods. Up they go. The battering ram is moving. Forcing our own forces out of the way. <laughs> Come on! Give them hell! Dwarven. Oh, we are taking the top. The Corsairs are outdoing the Goblin Infantry. But the, the, the great flood of Dwarven shields now crests the top. The Goblins are shunted back. Dragon Slayers pushing through like they're a knife through butter. Warm room temperature butter. And as our dwarves push forward, our entire force sides with them. Oh, it's just delightful to see, isn't it? It's moments like this that make me love this game so much. Many of you will be watching this thinking, what? Nothing's happening, Galley. They're just pushing through. But oh, it's a lovely sight to see. Think of what this means to these dwarves. This is our ancestral home for almost every long bit. This is where Durin first set his home. Gundabad, he awoke there. Yes, I know it has some sort of quasi-religious significance. 
But Moria is the first real city of the dwarves, or mansion of the dwarves is, they, they, is the term they use, if you are unfamiliar. They call them mansions rather than cities. Um, and it holds such a special place. This would be... This is just... A, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And to take it so easily and to see the flood of dwarven shields pressing against the orcs is just lovely. Almost brings a tear to the eye. Right, now the rest of you, if we can, please get up the hill. Let's go, 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 go. Let's charge up this thing. Corsairs have done very well, haven't they? Let's go, let's go. Flood into that central throne room. There we are. Barlin, come support the troops. Bring the Corsairs forward. I can't believe we've got Corsairs. <laughs> It's just such a... I, I like it, don't get me wrong. I like it a lot. But it's so random. The Dwarven Reclamation of Moria featuring Corsairs of Umbar. <laughs> oh, but every man has a price, I suppose. And right, now the real time six slog begins. We've made it to the top of the ramp. That's the hard part. This part is then the easy bit. We'll, we'll win without a doubt, I expect. Now we've claimed the top. Although, actually, having said that, the bulk of their army is still yet to even get into play. But if we can push them out of the square... Barlin, if you can get round this side... Get a flank on. Give us an Orn Habab. Right, we are now taking losses from the sheer number of archers that they have. I'm tempted, in fact, to just plumb our archers into the fight. The faster we can take the town square, the better, the quicker we'll win this. Yeah, I'm going to send the archers up and in. Get Barlin involved, because his bodyguard, like the dragon slayers, are phenomenally good. All we need to do is take the square. They can have all these units out here for as long as they want. Once the square is ours, this is over. They'll never be able to push back. Goblins have a much lower mass stat than dwarves. And they would need a lot of forces to try and essentially force us out of the position we are now taking. And we've got them on the flanks now as well. Oh, why didn't I zoom in? Sorry, I should have zoomed in ages ago. Now is the time! Ah, here you go, our archers are now up as well. The slow flood. Right, there it is. Alright, and then form everyone up. Just block that door and we've won this. Yeah, we have won this now. Nice. Right, Barlin, no sense in you dying for no reason, so pull yourself out. Oh, we haven't even shown what Barlin actually looks like himself, have we? Uh... Isn't that him there with the two-handed axe? I believe it is. Taking on his Hobbit movie appearance, actually. With the red coat. I'm calling it a coat. It's probably not a coat. Yeah, archers, if you can fire, feel free. Come, come back here and shoot at them. Thirty seconds remain, and Kazadum is ours. Victory, sweet victory. The campaign is not over yet. The day is ours. Seven hundred victory be a salve upon our wounds. Oh, and they said Legolas was overpowered. Eight hundred and fourteen goblins fell to the Dragon Slayer Company. That is fantastic work. We shall carry them high. Never forget the sacrifice made by the dwarves of the Grey Mountains. Victory. Hard won. Well fought. 
victory. Yeah. It's ours. Aye, it victory. is ours. Well done, men. Do we kill everyone? Do we just occupy because we're going to be here for ages? Uh, get the tax income if we keep... Oh, I'm just going to occupy. They won't like me for some time because we have a massive cultural difference. But as soon as they're all uh, dwarven, as soon as we've converted the goblins to the dwarven faith, <laughs> we'll be all right. Welcome then to Khazad-dum. Our new seat of power and the Misty Mountains have been reached. Excellent work. We don't have any money, but we make a reasonable amount of money. Within Khazad-dum, we have the Chamber of Marzable. Retraining costs are down by 20%. It gives us a diplomat. We have the Bridge of Khazad-dum. Tradable goods, a free upkeep plus one, and 350 gold as a standard. Um, we can also get Mithril Mines, but it requires a mining network, and then it just gives you an insane bonus. It is ridiculously strong. <laughs> Uh, ridiculously strong building. Mines. Oh, a mining network has already been constructed. Oh, that's interesting. A mining network has been constructed. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's because it has a different icon for the... So we can already get Mithril Mines. We just don't have the money for it. Yeah, there they are. 52,250 gold coins. <laughs> Oh, I think we're going to be getting a Stoneworkers Hall because it's going to pay for itself about nine times over by the time we build those Mithril Mines. Recruitment-wise, we get Zenith Guard, which is the Khazad-dum Bodyguard. That will give us an actual general. Khazad Sentries, the early-tier shield and spear Dwarven unit. Khazad Volunteers, we're already familiar with them. They're our sword and board. And Dwarven Travellers, our early-tier archer. From there, we need to get military buildings up and running um, from... I don't even know. Barracks. Oh, we've already got a barracks. Sorry, that's why. That's what's giving us that. Guard barracks would then give us legion units. Legion shield guard, hammer guard, and deeping guard. All very keen on the guard theme. Uh, and then finally, the army barracks, which gives us the best of the best, the sons of the fallen, and more importantly, the first legion. The game's almost undisputed best pike unit, didn't they win? Kazadum Guardians and Reclaimers also come at that tier as well. Fantastic work. From the range, our second tier are the Hithyglia Beast Hunters. So, Dwarves of Kazadum use archers, not crossbows, making them a wonderful little um, nation to play as. In order to upgrade the barracks, though, I think we need a better town hall. Indeed, we need a miners' union. And at the moment, we have only got a pipe hall. We need the third tier. So, we'll, get this, we'll go down, if we can, the building reduction line first. Merge all those together. Oh, we lost all of our Corsairs. Oh, no, there they are. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> nice. Right, we'll end the turn so that we get all the pomp and circumstance out of the way and get the message to say, you've done what you need to do. And then that will end episode number one. Much longer than an hour in, uh, in the end. Or just about, thereabouts. No, just, uh, just over an hour or so, including the little intro -y bit. The reading of the introduction message. But Kazadum is ours and the script will pass and Moria haven't attacked us and we should try and capitalise on that and take Kazadum west as fast as we can. Broar, a candidate for adoption. No thank you. Aye, my king. Hmm, nothing happened. Once you... My lord. Um, don't send him out on his own because that would be suicidal. Aye. Uh, no, why, why not? Just send him on his own. The the red circle is still... I'm not going to end the turn until we get the proper end message. Now we're going to learn that the game's going to crash because it's now going to generate a garrison in Khazadum for us to defeat. But we stopped at the red circle, didn't we? Hmm. Hmm. Until the script completes, we can't access other parts of the world. Let's see what happens now. Oh, do we need to have chosen the Avari? Candidate for adoption. A gift from the council. And the circle persists. 
and the area is still restricted. Hmm. I can't even check on Captain Lunluck's army because I'm not. We haven't won, but we gave, We got to the gate. I don't know what to. I think we've broken the script. In short, uh, I'm going to fiddle with that off screen then, I'm afraid. That is going to be where we're going to end this episode. I will maybe have to reload an earlier save and fight that whole bloody battle again, but I will do that myself. But for now, thank you very much for tuning in and watching along, and welcome back to the channel after this two-week gap. I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope you're looking forward to a plethora of content coming over the next week, and I hope that you are well. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navar, Naden, Peramad, Malonin, and farewell.